Okay. I, so I did foster care, um, mainly because I wanted to focus on like child abuse and like, you know, children kind of like being neglected and all of that. Um, so basically, um, I had interviewed three people, um, two families in Chantry, Parker, <laughs> and um, the family that gave me the most information um, had dealt with this uh, girl who was actually like abused by her brother and her father. Um, she, uh, let's see, she found her place. Um, She was placed in the home with uh, the Gentas. They have a funny name. They were my neighbors uh, growing up. And I just remember they always had children over, well not children, but teenagers. And I would always remember they would drink on the weekends and they would just party. They would be on the roof. It would be crazy. But um, I always wondered how that was because um, they just kept having teens over and they had their own children. They were all grown, but I just, I didn't understand how they could continue with teenagers partying all the time and continually like seeing the police over there dropping off teens because they've tried to run away or because they've been caught doing drugs or you know, they've been arrested for something. And so um, I, would, I constantly wondered why they would continue with foster care with those types of kids because after a while, you'd think they would get worn down. So um, I asked them a lot of questions, and um, they said that they wouldn't change a thing. They didn't regret one moment of uh, opening up their home to those teens because they knew if they didn't, then those teens would be worse off than they were in the foster care. So um, they said, obviously, they don't agree with the kids bumping back and forth through different homes, through different foster homes because their handlers, like, they get called saying, okay, this family can't handle this teen right now, so I'm bumping them over to your home, if that is okay, and they go through a background check and everything's cool and, you know, they take in those teens and, you know, you know previously about what the teen's history is and what their um, kind of rep is in the system. But like experiencing it and trying to put a different perspective on it when you have them is really hard. And I, I realized that um, this family um, was really, really strong because they dealt with these kids fighting against them, like physically and verbally, and um, they still opened up their home for these kids because they knew like if they didn't, then it wouldn't get any better. So um, they, uh, they, they had four children of their own, so they had you know experience with kids and teenagers rebelling in some way or another. But um, some of the kids, they realized if they were physically abusive, they could not take them in as much because they were an older couple. And they had been in the foster care system for a while, about 10 years. And so they knew somewhat of what they were getting into with each case, basically. And so they knew what they could handle and what they couldn't. And they handled a lot for what they um, allowed into their home. And um, they, the, Mr. Uh, Genta, sorry, they have, they have an interesting name. His name was Mike. He always instilled his rules, no matter what the case was. He was always, he always took those kids in as their own, as his own. And he did not treat them any differently than he did his own kids growing up. And so um, I thought that was pretty cool because 
here are these foreign people coming into your home. And you know it's almost like having guests over, but to treat them like they are no different from your own kids is really big because um, it puts you in a different place of mind and heart. And that's strong because it's hard to see these kids who are so disrespectful or have been through so much. Like, it's understandable, you know, like if it was too much for them, but they took on so much. So I really respected that. Um, they stayed physically, emotionally, and mentally strong throughout um, their years of foster care. Now they do not do it anymore because they have, they're a little too old for it, but um, they did it for a while. And um, I also interviewed Chantry, and she works in DHS, and she said um, that most of the families on her caseload are either single parent homes or separate uh, households. Uh, they receive calls of concern on children, and um, Chantry goes to investigate to see what is really going on and assesses whether it's safe for the child or not. She recommends services to families like food stamps or medical care, mental health. Um, she also determines if there is immediate danger in the foster home and then they either set up a safety plan or call the district attorney to try and get custody. Um, she told me that people that she typically works with are um, low income households. Uh, she, most of the problems come from a lack of resources. So she said rarely are there like any dangerous abusive types of things that she's dealt with at least. Um, so it's mostly poverty. Um, a story that really touched her that I thought was interesting was um, she was telling me about two girls and their single, mo single mother. Uh, the oldest daughter was depressed and the younger one was bipolar and used self-harm, had autism, and had epilepsy. Um, the mother couldn't get the, couldn't get medical care for the oldest daughter because senior care denied her prescription. Um, the daughter tried to kill herself two weeks later. She was taken to the ER and told she needed to take her daughter to, um, the mother, to an inpatient facility to get her help. Um, the mother didn't have a car and she didn't have any friends or family who could help her. So she called, basically begging DHS to take her daughter into custody because she thought it was the only way that her daughter could get any type of help, you know. And um, so, I don't know, I thought that was kind of sad because like, it's almost like, um, like giving up your own child for the better of them, you know. It's like people who know they can't have children and they give their child up for adoption, that's hard. <laughs> and that's like putting your heart out there for the world like to take care of instead of what you want to do is to nurture those children. And I don't know, I thought that was pretty big of her and she was purely thinking of her daughter in that situation. Um, especially being in poverty, it's hard because she wants to provide and she wants to support her daughters, especially with having all of those dis those you know mental illnesses or you know physical illnesses like for her to continue to be there for her daughters and to now like give them up, her up to custody is like it's I couldn't imagine dealing with all of that, loving your daughter through all those times, and then giving custody over to DHS would be hard. Um, but um, <coughs> DHS didn't take her daughter, actually. But <laughs> I mean, I, I would think that all of that would be really hard because she was willing to. So um, instead, Chantry drove her to um, the facility and got the oldest admitted and found someone in the community to volunteer their time and take the mother to see her daughter in the facility once a week. So I thought that was really cool of Chantry. She has a huge heart. <laughs> she always has. So.
Yeah, I mean the foster care system is, it, it has so much depth to it and it's almost like adopting children continually. Um, it takes a lot of strength um, and it really does show you like who God has chosen to nurture others and to love others. So yes, that is what those people that I interviewed. I also interviewed, sorry, I almost, I almost forgot this one. <laughs> um, I interviewed a third family and they've been in the foster care system for two years, so not very long. And they have uh, two um, foster care girls who are uh, uh, 14 and 16, and they're not related, but they came in um, and uh, they came from abusive families. And this newer couple to the whole foster care system um, they're basically like they're guinea pigs in a way <laughs> um, because they had two young children. They had a three-year-old and they had a seven-year-old. So they were a little bit skeptical about bringing in like teenagers. So um, they went through background check and uh, they are actually considering adopting the girls because they've come so far and they're not bad girls at all. <laughs> um, they actually have a pretty clean record but um, because of the households that they came from, they needed to be removed from those homes. Um, and they actually help out a lot with the two younger kids, the three-year-old and the seven-year-old. So I thought that was cool. Seeing it from a one family's perspective who has been in the foster care system for a while, and then from a newer perspective, and then from DHS's perspective. So I thought that was pretty cool. But, yeah. That's that. Any questions? What did the people find that was hardest, like, the hardest thing to deal with when dealing with kids who were abused? Basically finding kids, I know the family that I interviewed that was my neighbors, they were in the foster care system for uh, about 10 years. Um, they found continually, they always had the police at their door. You know, finding out that the kids that they needed to watch and be responsible for had been either drinking at a party or had been caught doing drugs on the side of the road or like one of them was actually arrested because this girl called him, uh, called the police because she um, complained about rape from the kid that they were taking in. And so um, she said that was really hard because, I mean, this is Jenta, her name is Carol. She, um, she said that that was probably the most appalling thing that she had to, you know, take in and, you know, kind of deal with because, um, I mean, all these cases are hard to deal with, but she, that was the first that she, like, the first rape call that she's ever had, you know, about a kid that she took in. And so he was removed because there, was, there were teen girls in the house that they also took in. They took in about, like, four foster kids at once because all of their kids were grown up and they were out of the house. So I always saw them on the roof, <laughs> they were being crazy all over the place in the yard, so I never went over there. But, um, yeah, that's what she said was really hard. And then one of the girls that they took in for a few months, actually, she became pregnant, so that was interesting too. But she didn't stay long with them, so because of things, <laughs> you know, thinking of the child. So. Yeah, but, you know, I dealt with a lot. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. anything else? All right.